1937 Russia, a physicist called Pyotr Kapitsa discovered the world's first superfluid. This rapidly evaporating liquid helium cools until at two degrees above absolute zero, a dramatic transformation takes place. Suddenly, you see that the bubbling stops and that the surface of the liquid helium is completely still. The temperature is actually being lowered even further now, but nothing particular is happening. This was in the middle of the Great Purge in Soviet Russia, where under Stalin, thousands of scientists and intellectuals were either brutally killed or sent to the gulags because they were seen as a threat to Stalin's authority. However, Kapitsa was kept alive because his discoveries were so incredible that they gained him international recognition. The liquid helium had turned into a superfluid, which displays some really odd properties. Here I have a beaker with an unglazed ceramic bottom of ultrafine porosity. Ordinarily, this container with tiny pores can hold liquid helium. But the moment the helium turns superfluid, it leaks through. Superfluid helium can do things we might have believed impossible. It appears to defy gravity. A thin film can climb walls and escape its container. This is because a superfluid has zero viscosity. It can even produce a frictionless fountain, one that never stops flowing. If Kapitza was a mere level 6 physicist, he would have likely been sent right to the gulags after refusing to join the Communist Party in 1934. But because he was such a based level 7 gigabrain sigma male, his knowledge and secrets were too valuable to get rid of. And if you want to get away with refusing to join the Communist Party like he did, then you'd better learn the 7 levels of physics. Level 1. Literal Child. I'd like to think most of my viewers are above this level, although sometimes I'm not so sure. On this level, your teacher will tell you that if you throw an object into the air, it will come back down because of something called gravity. So you decide to test the theory. <laughs> level 2. High School. Here you'll learn Newton's laws, concepts, energy, momentum, and electromagnetism, essentially just the basics of physics. This level is where you'll likely fall in love with physics because you'll learn cool things like how a hammer and a feather fall at the same speed on the moon. And also physics just makes sense and it's a logical, straightforward subject for most people. Level three, college. If you choose to study physics further, you'll begin to realize just how much mathematics is involved. You'll likely be using calculus to describe physical laws and along with, for some reason, the entire Greek alphabet. Here you'll be introduced to things like quantum physics, astrophysics, and modern physics, and if you're good at maths, then you really shouldn't have much of a problem. Level 4, Physics Major. Here you'll be using actual lab equipment and computational tools to run physical experiments, although now it's not so simple anymore. See, when you were a kid, you just did a thing and measured it a few times and it was called an experiment. But now you have to factor in all the different variables at play whilst worrying about the ever-increasing rate of inflation and whether you're going to be living in a cardboard box or a shed 10 years from now. Either way, you'll at least be able to brag about how you're technically a scientist and everyone will think you're really smart. Level 5. Graduate Researcher. At this level, you'll have to specialise into a subfield of physics, and if you're struggling to decide what to pick, then just pick the one that doesn't make you want to rip your hair out from its roots. Instead of sitting a final exam which gets marked by your superiors, you're publishing papers which undergo peer review. It's as if instead of submitting your homework to a teacher for it to get marked and graded, you're instead submitting it to a group of friends for them to make fun of you for it. Level 6. Physics professional. If your livelihood depends on your ability to do physics, you're either a physics teacher or you're on this level. One career will leave you depressed with not enough money to survive, and the other career will leave you depressed with just enough money to survive. But at least you'll be coming up with new theories that nobody really needed. And you'll have the hope that one day you might come up with something that somebody actually needed, and you'll move to level 7. Legendary physicist. Your contributions to physics are now paradigm shifting. Your name will be mentioned in random obscure physics textbooks and possibly by the odd physics teacher and maybe if you're lucky some random educational YouTube channel because you're so big brain. Unfortunately the guy on YouTube will probably be too stupid to really understand your theory and will likely massively oversimplify it to appease the average 10 year old YouTube viewer. And while physics teachers might admire you, their students probably hate you because you just invented more course content for them to memorize. Make sure you hit the join button below because I'm trying to raise money for an actual camera instead of using my indestructible smartphone, so piss off.